the good life full of fun seems to be the idea. Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. Big day today. Today is pie crust day. So when you talk about pie crust, it's the biggest debate in any family, isn't it? Who makes the best pie crust? Does grandma make it? Great grandma, mom, dad, chefs, where'd you ever have it? What country did you been to? What city you been to? What restaurant makes the best pie crust? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now who makes the best pie crust. I can't even talk, I'm so excited. We make the best pie crust here. But I'm gonna share with you a phenomenal recipe on how to make pie crust. And I'm gonna explain a little bit of the, um, and, and real briefly, but a little bit of the chemistry, a little bit of the logic behind what makes a crust. Because what makes a great crust, everybody talks about it flaky, but you don't want to make it so delicate that it crumbles apart. And you want to have some really good flavor to a, a pie crust too. It should enhance or add to the flavor of a pie rather than just offer texture, okay? So that being said, I want to share with you how to make a great pie crust, not only recipe wise, but we're going old school Italian here, so it's gonna be really cool, okay? All right, so that being said, I've got essentially the three things you want in any pie crust. You're gonna want a flour, you're gonna want a fat, which I gotta grab out of the refrigerator, and I didn't want it to get warm, right? And then you're gonna add a liquid. You're gonna add some type of a liquid to it, okay? So what I've got here is three cups of flour. Now, what kind of flour do you want? You want pastry flour. Why? Well, if you use bread flour, the protein content of bread flour is very high, so it's gonna make a, uh, too much gluten, it's gonna give you too much depth, too much texture, it's gonna be like a chewy, like think of like a pizza crust. You don't want that type of a crust for a pie, right? If you use a cake flour, that's gonna to create too much of a delicate crust. It's gonna crumble apart, it's gonna fall apart like sand. So you don't want that. So you want pastry flour, which is, which is gonna be almost like an all-purpose flour. That'll work, certainly, but that's gonna give you the perfect texture of flour, number one. Number two, when you're dealing with flour, the best flour you can get is unbleached and non-fortified, uh, okay, so unenriched. So the best flour you want is a non-bleached, unenriched. You don't want to add anything to it. It's going to be certainly healthier, and it's going to give you that beautiful flavor that you want in a beautiful pie crust, okay? Now we're going to add an egg. Hold it. Don't get flipped out or freaked out. We're going to add an egg, okay? Now an egg is going to add a little bit of fat to it, which is phenomenal. There's a lot of fat and a yolk of an egg. But it's also going to add a lot of flavor to it. It's going to give it a little bit extra texture, a little bit extra depth. Egg always adds flavor. Now we're going to add one tablespoon, one tablespoon of sugar. Now why do you add sugar? One, it's going to add just a hint of sweetness. Because remember, in most cases, you're making a pie crust uh, for a dessert. Not always, but you're going to add a pie crust for most desserts. Secondly, what sugar does is it actually inhibits gluten formation. So it's always going to make sure that the, the flour and the crust, if you will, in the end, is always gonna be more delicate, so it's gonna be fantastic, okay? You're gonna add a little salt. Now we're gonna add one teaspoon of salt to this recipe. The salt is gonna enhance. Remember, salt brings out flavor, so it's gonna enhance the flavor uh, of, uh, of the pie crust. Last, we're gonna add milk. Now, if anybody watches our videos, one of the things I do not like is I never like adding water to anything. Water always dilutes the flavor of something. The other problem you have with water is most waters are very mineral. They're gonna add a mineral content to it. Many uh, waters are fluorinated, so it's gonna add, which fluoride is not good for you anyways, but it's gonna add a, a fluoride flavor that you can maybe catch in the background. So it's not, not what you wanna to add to a pie crust. Last, and a very important ingredient, is gonna be our fat. So hold on one second, Magic of TV. Okay, there's our fat. So now I've got two sticks of butter. Now one of the reasons I left my knife out here, okay, is I left a piece here for us the cut, I just wanted to show you, when I cut the butter, I cube it, see? So I take the butter, okay, and I take it down the long end, and I cut it down, and then I flip the stick around, and I cut it the other way, and then I cut it in cubes. So you're gonna get nice little cubes, why? Because you don't wanna work the butter, you wanna stay cold, that's why I left it in the refrigerator, okay? So I left a piece just like this for you, just to show you, okay, nice and perfect, see that? and then it just comes apart in nice little cubes like that, okay? And that's gonna work right in the flour. And the goal here is to not work. You do not wanna need pie crust because it'll build gluten. You do not want gluten. You want it to stay light and flaky, right? But you still wanna have some body to it. So the egg and the way I make it, the way I show you, will absolutely be delicious. It will be the best pie crust. I'm so excited. The best pie crust you'll ever have, right? So hold on one second. 
All right, guys, so we're going to go old school Italian. So if anybody's ever watched somebody make um, a pasta dough, right, you're going to start with some flour. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with some flour. Okay, I'm going to put it right on a cold stone or cold marble. This is ideal. Now, why am I doing it this way? If you put it in a mixer, it needs, remember, I don't care how you do it, no matter what you use as a hook, it'll start to knead the flour. It'll start to build gluten. So that'll start to toughen it up. If you use a food processor, the problem with the food processor is it builds up heat very quickly. And the other problem is it incorporates the butter too much, as weird as that sounds. You want to have lumps of fat between the flour, and that's what makes it really flaky, and that's what gives a lot of flavor. Okay? All right, so that being said, I'm going to add my salt and sugar. So I'm just going to add it right to my pile here, right? So here we go. All right? And... So I've got about, I don't know if I said that earlier, I apologize, about three quarters of a cup of milk. And then we're going to add one egg as we beat it into the milk, okay? So it'll give us about a cup, a little bit more than a cup, okay? If I didn't say that before, I apologize. So now what I'm going to do, I'm so excited, I get so excited when I make pie crust, I forget things. So, all right, so here we go. We're going to just mix our dry ingredients. How easy is that, right? Then, just simply put, you're going to space it out. Now, one of the best things you can do is have baker's knives. If you have two of them, it's perfect, okay? If not, don't worry about it. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your butter, which is already cubed up, right? It's already in these beautiful little cubes and it's nice and cold, okay? Not frozen, but it's nice and cold, okay? Now, I look like a, I look like a samurai guy here, like we're gonna do a hibachi, right? Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my flour and I'm gonna put it and mix it and fold it within the fat, within the butter, okay? Now some recipes have used uh, like a lard, okay? And the problem we have with lard is it gets too silky, too mushy, and I'm not a fan of uh, shortening, I'll tell you right, two reasons. One, hydrogenated fat is really, really bad for you, okay, trans fats. Number two, the problem with shortening is uh, it, it also creates a really a nice flaky crust, but it doesn't add any flavor to it. It has no flavor. In fact, what it does is it takes away flavor from what you're trying to make. So shortening, to me, is not a good choice, okay? If you look at any of the greatest bakers or anybody that's always making the best, a lot of French cooking and so forth, a lot of Italian cooking and baking, they're always going to use butter because butter always adds flavor to the, to the dish, to whatever you're making. So let me... Let me fold this. Now this is going to take just a couple of minutes. So let me fold this in for a couple of minutes. And you're just going to go, one knife I use. If you don't have a baker's knife, you can use a knife or a couple of knives. Don't worry about it. Okay? And you're just going to keep breaking it up to where you get as much of the butter incorporated and folded right within the flour. Okay? So give me a minute. I'll tune right back with you guys. Alright guys, welcome back. So what I've done here is I've pretty much chopped it. And I've been like two minutes, okay? And I'm chopping it in. Now let me tell you what the game plan is here to make a nice crust. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get butter, which is about 80% uh, fat, 20% water, okay? You're trying to get the butter in between the flour. So when the butter gets hot, if you get layers here, right? So here's a layer of flour, here's another layer of flour, and you got a chunk of butter in there, right? That'll actually create steam and between the fat and the steam, it'll actually create a gap. It'll actually create a little bit of a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer. And that's what gives it that flaky, beautiful feel. Again, the advantage you have with the butter is it always adds flavor to it. So, okay, I don't wanna make it too complicated. I don't wanna sound like a chemist, but it's just so important to add that, that fat. That's why like a croissant, for example, or a, a dough that you'll have, like a pastry dough, that will have that beautiful flake, and that's from butter and the moisture. So you need the moisture and you need the fat. Okay, so here we go. So now we're done. So now I'm going to do like a well, okay, like you would do when you're making a pasta dough, okay? Now I'm going to take my egg. Remember, always crack your egg over a clear dish if you can, then we can ch check for any shells. I'm going to mix that egg up real quick. Isn't this fun? It's like grandma's kitchen right here. I'll tell you, my grandmother used to have just a, a table that she would use with a piece of plywood on there. And she had a, a board, like a stone board that she would do a lot of her cooking. So she'd put that right over the top. All right, so I'm taking the egg, 
after I've already beat it, and I'm going to put it in some milk. Now remember, some recipes, not the end of the world, but some recipes will, will tell you to put water in there. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but again, we're always trying to add flavor to something. We're not trying to dilute it. Milk will add flavor, water will dilute it. So, all right, so there we go. We're, night, we're mixed really well. And now, just like you're doing a pasta, you're going to pour this in the middle. And you're not going to do all of it. Do a little bit, maybe half. Okay, just give it a minute. And then with the fork, you're just taking the tongs of the fork, right? And you're just incorporating a little bit of the flour. And that's just so it doesn't spill all over. That's all you're doing, okay? I think we had a little Tony Bennett plan, which is always fun. And don't worry about the mess, because it will actually take care of itself. Open it up a little bit more. I'm not going to hold any back here. I'm going to just put it right in there. So, you know, if it comes out a little bit wet, you just add a little extra flour. Most of the time what will happen here is you want it to you want it to be a little bit on the dry side because then what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it in saran wrap and we're going to actually put it in the refrigerator. And then when you put it in the refrigerator what happens is that hour that goes by the, the dough relaxes beautifully and what also happens is the moisture within the uh, dough will hydrate the flour so it gives it a beautiful crusty feel okay all right so that's pretty good right there right so you're thinking oh my god joe that is just a mess what are you teaching me here i'm cooking italian with joe okay now again i'm going to pull my ginsu knives out here okay and just like you would uh just like you would my pasta dough right or my gnocchi dough you're just going to start mixing it up now see i'm not kneading it at all right i'm cutting it up you're not kneading it, you're not pushing it, you're not putting your warm hands on it. The table's nice and cold, so you don't have to worry about your temperature, you don't have to worry about your butter. And you're just going to take your baker's knife and just keep working it, okay, just for a minute. Now, I don't know how long this has been, this is real time, right? We're not editing anything out here. And you're going to see it's just kind of crumbly, right? And it'll start to come together here in about another moment. And if it ever comes dry, just add a little bit more egg. Okay. And now I'm just going to see how it's starting to stay right there. It's beautiful. The mixture is perfect. I got a little bit more flour, so don't worry about it. Keep mixing it for another minute. And again, you don't want to knead it. Okay, now without even using my hands, it's coming out perfect. Okay, and I got a little bit of, of flour in there. See that? Just a touch, and that's almost done. There it is, right there. Perfect. Okay, and just keep working it. And again, I didn't want to edit any time here, just so you could see exactly how easy this is. You know, and if you got to. See that? Look at that. Same together. Perfect, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it stay. Whoop, I lost a piece. It's so fresh, it's flying right off the counter. Right? Now I'm going to just mush it together with my hands. Okay, and then I'm going to fold it. I'm going to fold it in once. Okay? Look at that. Perfect. It's absolutely perfect. See, it's kind of on the dry side, which is great. It's beautiful. And I'm going to fold it one time over, and that's it, guys. That's it. Do not, your, your tendency is going to be to want to push on it and knead it. You don't do anything. It's beautiful. Now I'm going to grab a piece of saran wrap. Hold on one second. All right, guys, here you go, right? So I've got my saran wrap, right? And then I'm just going to take it. Again, the less you touch it at this point, the better. Now we're going to let time and chemistry take over, right? So you got moisture in there. You got your butter in there. You're gonna have nice little lumps of butter in there. That's perfect, that's what you want. You don't wanna have it all cornmeal. You wanna have lumps of butter. That's what's gonna add that flake to it. I'm done. I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator for about an hour. What'll happen is, like I said, time and chemistry will take over. The water will hydrate the flour. It's gonna be even more incorporated. It'll be a beautiful dough. We're gonna roll it out, put it in the pie crust. It's gonna look beautiful. All right, guys, look at that, okay? So it's been about an hour, right? And 
I just want to show you, and hopefully we can do it on the camera, which is beautiful. You see, you can see it in here. You see those hunks of butter in there? It's exactly what you want. Now this went in kind of dry, but you'll notice after it sat in there a little bit, right, for the hour, all the moisture between the egg and the butter, right, and the milk, everything, it gets incorporated, and now the flour is really well hydrated, right? So what I'm gonna do, guys, is I wanna roll this out, show you exactly how easy it is to work with, just with a little flour, and then I'm gonna pop it in a pie crust. Now today we're gonna make a blueberry pie, it'll be another video that we're putting together. It's gonna be absolutely unbelievable, so make sure you guys take a peek at that. Other than that, I'm gonna show you how to set it up. I'll show you exactly how to prep it for any type of, uh, like a fruit pie or what have you, give you a couple of tips on that. Tune right back with you guys. All right guys, so I just got some loose flour here, right? And I'm gonna get my surface. And then I'm gonna take this. Now remember, same rules apply. The less likely you are to handle it, the better it'll be. You don't wanna melt things, you don't want it to get it hot, okay? So you don't wanna undo all that nice work we did, right? So then I'm gonna put this across. Now I only want half, because this is gonna make two pies, right? So I'm gonna take this piece, right? I'm gonna put this off to the side, right? And then I've got this beautiful piece right here. And I'm just gonna make a nice little ball. And I've seen some people do it. They do it between wax paper and, and some other techniques. They've got that new silicone now, which is great. So you can use any of those, okay? Now this is one of my favorite rolling pins. See how the middle is, uh, it's a French rolling pin, but it's, it's thicker in the middle, right? So one of the rules is, oh, look at the, how the, see those nice chunks of butter right in there, how nice that is? So the general rule is always turn your dough let me get this across. Always turn your dough when you're doing things. Oh, look at that. See how nice marbled it is? Can you get in there and check that out? See how perfect that is? It's exactly what you want. You know, you don't want that cornmeal, right? Look at that, huh? So if you want to if you want to turn the flour, rather than get in the habit of doing this all the time, make sure you turn your dough periodically because if not, a lot of times what happens is you don't realize but it's getting stuck and it'll stick to the bottom, so. See how that, it's just getting logged up a little bit. There you go, perfect, right? So we're gonna just keep bringing it across, right? Look at that, oh, that is beautiful. Okay, keep bringing it across. We're almost done. I'm gonna grab my other rolling pin here. I'm getting really close to the side. And I like to do this some of this stuff in real time. I don't mean to make my video long, but I just want to show you guys how easy it is to do a lot of this stuff, right? A lot of times something will happen. Now right there it just hung up a bit. Yeah, it's beautiful. I got a little bit closer for the camera. I was trying to move it. Beautiful. Alright, and what's our goal here? We want to be just bigger than that, okay? So you don't want to go too thin, whoop. You don't want to go too thin because then it'll be too fragile, right? And this is so cold, it's still nice and cold. And we're basically there. So I'm gonna do this and that. Now we're gonna make a blueberry pie today, so I'll show you how to do that. It's gonna be a great video. You bring this across, pop that in there, lay it across just like that. Look at that, you got plenty. And if you run across something like that, you just fold it over, don't even worry about it. Right? Trust me, that person gets lucky, they get a little extra. All right, now here's a, a little tip. We know that we're, in this case, that we're gonna do a blueberry, and blueberries or any type of fruit pies, they give off a little bit of moisture. So one of the things, you don't wanna poke a lot of holes in the bottom of this, because then the moisture will penetrate the dough, makes the bottom soggy, you don't wanna do that. So what you want to do in this case is refrigerate it first. So I'm going to cut the edge off just a bit. I'm going to refrigerate this in this type of, of case, okay, in the blueberry pie. And then what I'm going to do is when I bring it out, I want to give it a little bit of an egg wash. And what that'll do is the egg and the protein will actually seal the bottom so that it heats up and gets nice and crispy on the bottom and it doesn't, it prevents the uh, absorption of the moisture in the dough, makes it soggy. It's a nice, just a little tip. Uh, that my grandmother used to do I just want to share with you guys and that's it it's this dough is actually going to come out absolutely perfect what I want to share with you guys is a blueberry pie video that we're going to do in a minute so if you want to see the end result of this just click on one of our blueberry pies you can click right to the end and see exactly how the uh, 
crust comes out. It's going to be absolutely delicious. Guys, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for joining me to a trip to old school Italy on how to make an old fashioned pie crust. It's going to be flaky and with a lot of flavor, a lot of depth. Something that hopefully will make a family tradition for the holidays. And hopefully it's a nice simple pie crust that you and your family can make for generations to come. In the meantime, guys, have a great week. Bon appetit. Talk to you guys next week. It's the good life.